loving greetings and pranams. All you dear, dear devotees participating in convocation all around the world. And here for this closing program, I'm here in the chapel in our Self-Realization Fellowship International Headquarters, our beautiful and very sacred Mother Center for this, I'm about to say close of convocation, but it almost feels like uh, that can't be true. We'll just say our transition into the next phase, isn't it, to carry with us. You know, I have to tell you, I'm... <laughs> I'm having a little difficulty talking. Uh, I've, been, I've been following all the activities that all of you have been taking part in these last six, seven days. And I think some of the joy, or a lot of the joy that you're feeling, I think it's contagious because it makes me feel a little bit drunk as well. <laughs> so uh, you'll have to bear with me as I try to uh, say something that uh, follows the correct rules of, um, of grammar and discourse. <laughs> you know, like I say, I've been, I've been following along and feeling, trying to feel it and tune in with what you all have been experiencing. And, uh, I get reports, I get messages from, from many of you. I get uh, little uh, anecdotes from the monastics. And so, in thinking of what to uh, share with you at, at this last talk, I, I thought, well, let me just try to summarize what you will be taking with you. That's pretty presumptuous, isn't it? Every, all of Guruji's devotees are totally unique creations of, of God. So how can we find a, a common thread there? Well, close your eyes and listen, and then you later can tell me if I was right or not. I think this is what, what you'll be taking. I am submerged in eternal light. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that light. The Divine Spirit fills me within and without. Now please join in silently. Feel, add your own divine perception, your own divine realization. I am submerged in eternal peace. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that peace. The Divine Spirit calms me within and without. I am submerged in eternal wisdom. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that wisdom. The Divine Spirit guides me within and without. I am submerged in eternal love, eternal love, eternal love. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that love. The Divine Spirit loves me within and without. I am submerged in eternal bliss. I am submerged in eternal bliss. I am submerged in eternal bliss. It permeates every particle of my being. I am living in that bliss. The Divine Spirit makes me happy within and without. The eternal Om vibrates through my being. The eternal Om vibrates through my being. Divine Spirit 
By your grace and power, I will succeed. The eternal loam vibrates through my being. Divine Spirit, by your grace and power, I will succeed. That's a little glimpse of what I felt pouring into my heart and mind and consciousness as when I put them on all of you around the world who have been taking part in this wonderful event, this 2023 World Convocation. Now, I think I, I, think I should provide a little context just for those who may come across this video randomly on YouTube <laughs> and wonder who are these people. <laughs> well, let me just say that um, I'm here with many, joined by many and many of the 20 to 30,000 people who have participated online in this week-long convocation of um, classes and meditations and immersion in the Kriya Yoga teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. So I'm, I'm here with some of these 20 to 30,000 uh, God-drunk, God-inspired, uh, hearts filled with joy and bliss and divine love and happiness. And uh, we've all come together for this closing program. So I hope that explains to you what you're watching. <laughs> You know, for all of you who, who have participated in Convocation, I want to just say one thing about this week. I want, to let, I want to tell you, I want to impress upon you on my own behalf and also on behalf of all the monks and nuns. Every class that, that's been given, every meditation, every kirtan, every other event that's been part of this week, all of it has been for one reason, one reason only. Because we know how much Guru loves you. We know how much Guru loves you. And what a joy it is to do for those whom he loves. We love you too. I certainly do. I, I think of all of you as my brothers and sisters, my dear divine friends, my companions in arms in this most fulfilling, most amazing adventure of the soul. On the path to liberation, the path to freedom, the path of God love, the path of God realization. I'm humbly grateful for the friendship and the companionship and the support and the inspiration that all of you bring to this wonderful divine satsang of SRF and YSS. I was thinking about some appropriate things to say for this closing program. And like, like I said earlier, I was coming up blank. And then, uh, as often happens, when we have spent a sufficient amount of time immersed in the words and the teachings and the writings of Gurudev, it came to my mind this, this wonderful passage that he, he spoke to devotees right here in this very chapel. This was in 1936. He had just come back from India. And uh, let me just read these words because this is exactly what I was looking for to be able to convey to each of you. Guruji says this. He says, I don't want to lecture anymore. Divine Mother says, 
Only drink my love with devotees. Only drink my love with devotees. That's all I want to do. I have no other desire. Guruji says, those who would come to me, come with that spirit. Some of India's greatest teachers spoke very little. They taught their followers rather to go within and feel and feel and then ask them to explain what they had experienced. Guruji says, in this ever-changing, uncertain world, you often feel very lonely. God alone will never disappoint you. Your joy in all other things will grow stale, and you want something else, something else, something more. But God is that, which when you have him, you want him more and more. So Guruji says, the only real sermon is the love of God. The only real sermon is the contact of God, rather. That great power of God, which is vibrating throughout this hall. It is very sacred. That's why I don't want to draw curiosity seekers with my words. I want only to give his love to thirsty souls everywhere. The glories of the masters have to be revived. They used to sit in the forest in divine communion, no talking, no trying to build a following, just surrounded by true souls, attracted by the magnetism of God love. Imagine what joy, what glory, a place of divine communion, that is what Mount Washington is going to be. Day and night we shall drink his name. In this way we must seek him, feel him, and speak of him, that those who come here may go away singing, feeling, and talking only of God. Those words were said by Guruji when all he had was, in America anyways, was Mount Washington. And of course, his Ranchi ashram in India. But you can feel, you can feel behind his words. As I repeat them today, he adds to that, not just Mount Washington, all the ashrams, all the temples, all the centers, even including this great worldwide wallless temple of our online meditation center, our online Dhyan Kendra. All those, these must be places that bring forth those that love God, those that sing of God, those that talk of God, those that feel God. And I know that's what you have been building and accumulating and honeycombing in the secret recesses of your heart during this convocation. Hold on to it, hold on to it, grow it, revisit it, share it. You know, we talk about what to do at the end of convocation, how to hold on to what we've gained during convocation. We all know divine love, divine joy, divine fellowship, all these things, they only grow as we give them away to others. Hold on to them, grow them, share them, be drunk with them. Now, before we go on any further, I hope you'll let me just take this opportunity to express my, my thanks, my gratitude for all the greetings and messages and gifts and um, wonderful tokens of your regard, I know, for only one, for him, that have come during convocation and, and throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you for that. And especially thank you to all the many, many souls who have lent their support, their time, their energy, 
their financial generosity to helping carry on this work of, of the gurus. You know, and just take one example, this convocation. We're able now for several years to offer this no enrollment fee. Please come, whoever is interested around the world, whether you're a member of SRF and YSS or none of the above. And there have been. People, people stumble along these, these videos and they, uh, they come to the... Um, they may come right in the middle, they may come at the beginning, but then from time to time we hear about people when they're enrolled for the lessons that they... Uh, how did you hear about these teachings? Oh, I came to the online convocation. So one, one example only of how uh, the support and the divine generosity and prayers and goodwill, moral support, friendship support that we feel from all of you. You know, in my, in my talks in India a few months ago, I, I was speaking about this, this beautiful, great uh, refuge or shelter of the Kriya Yoga teachings. Kriya Yoga Sharanam. Sharanam means refuge, it means a divine shelter. This Kriya Yoga Sharanam, Kriya Yoga refuge that our Guru has built to shelter and to protect and to guide and nurture all of us. And how blessed we are over these last few years, especially to see how that has extended, how it's grown, how it's reached out to embrace more and more souls around the world through all sorts of different um, projects and initiatives and all of these things that, believe me when I say none of it would have happened without the loving support of many, many devotees around the world. So thank you for that. You know, let's put it in perspective. Here's, here's how I think of it. Your support, your support has allowed the infinite Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, Satguru consciousness to flow through your hearts and minds, your hands and feet, your gestures of support to build this Kriya Yoga Sharanam, this Kriya Yoga Refuge for thousands and thousands and millions to come around the world. So I thank you for that. I thank you for that. What a blessed week we've had. I want to just share some notes that, uh, that my staff put together to share with you. Uh, you may be Interested, I'm thrilled probably as I was to know that um, this year we have participants online and in person coming from 130 countries. And uh, uh, that includes those who registered, uh, more than 22,000. And uh, of course, those who don't have to register but just watch the videos on YouTube, uh, many, many more. And that we've seen in past years that continues to escalate throughout the year because those videos, those programs remain available. So um, that's wonderful. You, many, many of us uh, and many of you remember the days, even back, going back to the Biltmore Hotel when 2,000 was a huge number, isn't it? And then, and then the Bonaventure Hotel uh, over the years when uh, we would um, maybe double that or once in a while, triple that, but I, uh, I sometimes I just sit back and I think uh, of our beloved Diamataji, who Guruji asked to start these convocations so many years ago, and I think, Ma, what do you think? <laughs> and uh, you know, you just see that <clears throat> the <clears throat> those um, blazing blue eyes of hers and that sweet divine motherly smile, and uh, just nodding her head, you know. For one thing, she knew. She knew this was coming. And she did, along with the others, that those um, divine ones who were there with her, part of that first generation of Guruji's disciples who did so much for all of us to build the foundation. I, I often tell those who are involved in different projects and different, um, you know, we can call them quote unquote achievements or accomplishments. You say, no, we're just picking the low hanging fruit. 
the orchard, the trees, the, the nourishing, the planting and tending of them, that was done by those spiritual giants who came before us. So, soul's gratitude to, to all of them. So anyways, going back to convocation, all over North and South America, we have participants. Uh, of course, India, many from India, <clears throat> Australia and New Zealand, um, pretty much all, or maybe even all the countries in Europe, including even Ukraine and Russia, if you can believe it. Many countries in Africa, all over Africa, East Africa, West Africa, North Africa, South Africa. The Caribbean islands are joining in. The uh, many countries in the Middle East. And by the way, we, uh, we just released a few weeks ago our first two SRF books in the Arabic language. So um, the work goes on, the work spreads. That's um, <clears throat> how you can talk with God in metaphysical meditations in Arabic. We have devotees here from the far-flung Pacific Islands, from East Asia, including Hong Kong and Singapore, Vietnam, China, Indonesia, South Asia, Central Asia, I'd say pretty much everywhere <laughs> except Antarctica. <laughs> and uh, who knows? No one really knows what's going on underneath that, that ice cap, do we? So who knows who's down there watching on YouTube? <laughs> I'm joking, of course. but. You know, uh, usually we, we talk about our world convocation. And by that, we've meant in past years, we mean because people from all over the world, these past um, 70 years since 1950, have come uh, from all over the world to take part in convocation. And then, of course, in the, in the last few years, that world convocation term has taken on a little different meaning because we've literally had people joining in online from all over the world. And this year, we even had another first. This year, we were able to send uh, groups, 14 um, monastics, out to 14 different cities all around uh, North America, South America, and Europe, other places, to, for the first time, extending, you might say, the physical footprint of the World Convocation. And... Uh, these, uh, these devotees, I'm, I'm just going to read you um, who they are, where they are, and then uh, we have, they all sent in a little video greeting that they, we wanted to share with all of the, uh, um, the rest of the devotees around the world. So um, you'll see in the video, I, it goes by pretty quick, so I'm gonna read this first, but, um, and this, this isn't the order that you'll see them, but anyway, be that as it may. Um, Sister Ranjana and Branchini Laura, have been um, in the New York City Center and also in Tampa Bay in Florida. What they did, each group of monastics went for the opening program in the first half of the week to one city, and then they went for the rest of the week and the closing program to a second city. And we get uh, uh, more coverage that way. So then we had um, uh, Brahmachari Klaus and Brahmachari Baskarananda who have gone to Houston, Texas and Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, Sister Premimai and Sister Chaitana, who have uh, visited Seattle, Washington, and Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. We have Brother Bhimananda and Brahmachari Roberto, who are in the London uh, Center in the UK, and also then went to the Madrid Center in Spain. And uh, then we have Brother Kalyanananda and Brahmachari Marco, who visited our center in Zurich, in Switzerland, and then went to Assisi in Italy, our meditation center there. And then Sister Bhavani and Sister Janavi, who have gone to the uh, SRF retreat in Brazil, in Armasal, Brazil, and then later to the SRF meditation group in Chile, in Santiago, Chile. And then uh, also, the last group, uh, Brother Devananda and Brother Samatananda, who uh, spent time with our devotees in Mexico City Center and then flew down to Colombia, to Bogota, Colombia. So you, you'll see this now. Can we play the little video and uh, just uh, feel what they're feeling from around the world?
Greetings from Kansas City. Jai Guru. Jai Guru from New York City Center. Greetings from Vancouver. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Greetings from Mexico. Jai Guru. Greetings from Colombia. Greetings from Armação de Fi, Brazil. Jai Guru! Greetings from the London Centre. Happy Convocation. Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Greetings from Missouri Centre. Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Warm greetings! <laughs> Calurosos saludos desde Santiago, Chile. Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Jai! Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Jai Guru! Jai! World Convocation, huh? That was wonderful. <laughs> And then there were many other of our groups and, and meditation centers around the world who got together uh, either in their own facility or maybe rented a retreat facility to have time to uh, just to immerse themselves in convocation. Uh, many, many more. You'll, you read all about this on our, our blog on the website. We have lots of pictures there too. But I wanted to share that with you. And then lastly, just looking ahead to next year, in uh, the 2024 convocation, we have uh, once again uh, engaged the Bonaventure Hotel. So, <laughs> well, I hear everybody clapping, but in my ear, I also hear people saying, but you're doing it online too, right? <laughs> yes, online too. So uh, there's no going back now, right? We'll, uh, but we'll, we'll try, we'll, um, we've, um, you know, we've had a hybrid uh, event this year and we'll carry that over for next year and into, into the Bonaventure, bring back some of the format and some of the um, uh, facilities and, and opportunities that, that uh, have worked so well in years past. So um, you'll get an email about that with the dates and other details. Um, before too long, but I, I wanted to share that with you as we close this 2023 convocation. And then last, let me just give a huge, huge heartfelt thanks to the entire team that made possible this 2023 convocation. Will you join me in, in giving them uh, pronoms from the heart, from the soul, for making all this possible? I I don't know about you, maybe you're you have a broader vision, but it's completely beyond my mental capacity even to conceive everything that they had to do to make all of this come together. Everything from the, um, the live streams at the different temples and the virtual pilgrimage tours and the, oh, those fellowship rooms. What about those fellowship rooms? Isn't that amazing? I, I got the most touching and, and uh, um, really heart-melting stories from the monastics who who took part in those. And just to watch all of you devotees around the world to meet each other. To meet each other, as Guruji said, in that happy family of self-realization, on that level where it really matters, the level of we are souls, we are seeking God, we love God. We have given our lives to following the sadhana and the teachings of our divine guru. What friendship could be sweeter? What bond, what feeling of fellowship could be more enduring and more meaningful? So to all of you on the, the convocation team, thank you, thank you from all of us. You know, for years, these last few years, we've talked about how convocation and a number of our other events have been taking place in what we've called this Wallless temple, isn't it? Well, in order to maintain that wallless temple, we have also developed during that period a wallless sevalaya. 
What is Sevaliah? It means a place of divine service. You know, those of you who have been to our, our Ranchi Ashram, you know that um, there inside the gate is uh, um, fairly recently in the last few years, um, a, a large administration office building. And when that was being built and dedicated, uh, the monks and the devotees there asked Mernalini Mataji, well, what should we call it when it's finished? And, and um, she thought about it, and I'm sure within uh, a few microseconds ruled out any concept of main office or, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this, uh, this office or this facility or so on and so forth. And so she came up with this name. Uh, and she wanted it called Seva Laya. Seva, of course, means service. Laya means place, place of divine service. So just as though we've had, um, just as we've had this wallless temple, that wallless temple and wallless convocation, believe me, it could only happen if, with also this wallless Seva Laya. And by that, I mean that we've been able to draw the, the help and the um, support and the unbelievable talents and expertise of devotees, not just from around our local Southern California area, but literally all over the world. So that's what, uh, that's what this Wallace Sevalaya has accomplished. And not just for convocation. This goes on all through the year. Many of the uh, key uh, managers and supervisors and, and uh, really the brains, you might say, behind so much of what goes on in the day-to-day -day work of SRF. They may live in, they may live he here in Los Angeles, they may live in Encinitas, but they just as well could be living in, and do live in Europe, in Canada, in India, other parts of the United States, South America, Central America. It's just it's thrilling to see what Gorgi is doing with his, as he said, his family of souls, his shining, shining jewels scattered around the world. So that's uh, my long-winded thank you <laughs> to each of you. So taking convocation home, taking it with us when we're done. A little story. You know, in our, um, in our monastic training, we, um, from time to time, once or twice a year, twice a year, if usually, that's the, that's the norm, we are uh, encouraged to go on spiritual retreats, a time of seclusion, complete um, uh, disengaging from the normal outer activities, uh, in silence, uh, longer meditation, <clears throat> perhaps fasting, um, Constant practicing the presence of God, just alone for, for a week of, of retreat with, um, with God and Guru. And um, I found often over the years, when, it, when you get to the last day, when you get near the end and have to start thinking about uh, packing and, and coming back to the, the normal schedule, the normal work, you know, there's a little bit of, oh gosh, I, uh, I hope I can hold on to this because it's been so sweet. It's been so rich. It's been so real. And how am I going to hold on to that when I go back into that, into those clouds of Maya? Well, one time when I was in that uh, mood, you might say, <laughs> uh, I do like we often do and opened up the autobiography just to see what page would randomly uh, point me to a, uh, to a right attitude. And you know what it opened to? It was that story when Guruji was leaving India to come to America. You know, he said, I was, I was going about my preparations to leave master in my native land for the unknown shores of America, and I experienced not a little trepidation. I had heard many stories about the, quote, materialistic West. And then what happened? knock on the door, and there's the divine and celestial Mahavatar Babaji saying, fear not, you shall be protected. That's what my eye fell on, and it gave me a different attitude. Fear not, you shall be protected. 
you know, Gorgi had been concerned, as he said, he didn't want to lose himself in the, the fog of modern utilitarianism. You know, and that, uh, that materialistic vibration, that fog, those soul-obscuring clouds and, and vibrations, they've only grown more and more, isn't it, in these hundred and some years since then. We know what you all have to face. We know what you all have to contend with. We know what's there resisting your spiritual efforts and your sadhana. And when you, come, when you get back into your normal daily routine after convocation, it would please me very much. And I know it would please Guruji if you would take these words as a promise for yourselves too. Fear not, you shall be protected. Oh, my dear ones, if only you knew, if only you knew how much Guruji loves you. If you only knew how much he cares for you. Each one of you who has given your lives into his charge. He created this, as I said, this magnificent refuge in Sharanam and, uh, and shelter for us, the Kriya Yoga path and teachings. And not only did he create that shelter, but he interceded for us for when we get to that shelter. You know, his beautiful words, he said, Lord, they have come to thy door, Lord, do not turn them away. Do not turn them away. That's the guru's intercession. You know that chant where he said, they, those who are in despair, wipe thou their tears. They have come to thy door, Lord. Give them an audience. Give them an audience, Lord. To whom are they going to go? To whom will they go? They have no one, Lord. Do not turn them away. Do not turn them away. That is in a very real way the intercession of the guru for each of you. That's how he feels for you. Utter compassion, utter unconditional love and caring. And he himself said, I want to load my boat with those waiting thirsty ones, that's all of us, and carry them by the opal pool of iridescent joy, where my father distributes his all desire quenching liquid peace. Oh, I will come again and again. If need be a trillion times, crossing a million crags of suffering, with bleeding feet I will come, so long as I know there's one stray brother, one stray sister who is left behind. That is the guru to whom our divine beloved has drawn your souls. And to every sincere disciple, Guruji has said and says every day in meditation if we tune our ears to hear it every day he has said God has sent me to you and I shall never fail you. God has sent me to you and he has sent you to me and I shall never fail you. Guruji when when he was preparing this um, new edition of the SRF and YSS lessons in the last years of his life, I've told you this before, but it bears repeating, he was working with our beloved and revered late Mrinalini Mataji, and he told her, he said, one of, the, one of the goals, one of the criteria for this program of new lessons, he said, I want there to be a continuous, lifelong stream of inspiration and support. Going out from the Mother Center to the members, to the devotees all over the world, supporting them, encouraging them, renewing their faith, renewing their courage, giving them guidance in all of the, uh, how to navigate the, uh, the tricky twists and turns of life. 
a continuous stream, lifelong stream of inspiration. And I have to tell you, for all of us who live here in the ashram, all of us monks or nuns, believe me, we take these as our marching orders from God and Guru. We will never leave you defenseless. We'll never leave you alone. We'll never leave you empty-handed. All of us, it's our joy to work ceaselessly to continue that lifelong, continuous stream of inspiration into your homes, into your lives, into your hearts. You know, Guruji, Guruji was the first live streamer in SRF. <laughs> you know, here we are having this world convocation with these live stream videos. We didn't think of a thing. He, he started. And it just, just listen to this word picture that our beloved Diamathiji gave. This happened right here in the, in the international headquarters up on the third floor on March 7th, 1952, before he went down to the Biltmore Hotel and gave that final speech and then entered Mahasamadhi. So listen to, listen to what he was doing on that last day from this building. Ma said, throughout the long day of March 7th, Master was very quiet, asking that no one speak in his presence and that those in adjoining rooms tiptoe softly about their work. Often that day, the disciples saw his eyes turn upward to the spiritual eye center. When he spoke at all, it was in terms of great affection, appreciation, and kindness. And then Ma says, but most noticeable of all, was the influence it was felt by everyone who entered into his sitting room of the vibrations of intense, intense divine love that emanated from him. The disciples felt as though they were standing in the presence of the great mother of the universe. She had taken complete possession of him, it seemed, and was using him as a perfect channel to send out waves of love to all creation. Waves of love to all creation. That, my brothers and sisters, is the real live streaming. And we can feel that even today. I know that many of you have felt it. Many of you have been building that and gathering that in your hearts throughout this week of meditations and classes and inspirations and divine fellowship. But the point is this. Once we are diligent, diligent and loyal and committed to a daily meditation practice, you know what happens then? Then our nervous system, that astral causal network of of action and instruments of action and instruments of knowledge that's embedded secretly in these human forms that becomes more and more refined and it becomes more and more attuned, more and more sensitive to that live stream of the Guru's divine love, divine consciousness. You know, really, we don't have to be worried about holding on to it. Convocation, yes, the, the formal week is over. We don't have to worry about being able to hold on to it. That just makes people tense. It makes you anxious, gives you anxiety. All we need to know is that we can access it anytime by learning this spiritual method of being a human live streamer. So I'm sending you out from convocation as Guruji's human live streamers. <laughs> Who accepts the challenge? <laughs> okay. It's a pretty, uh, full, <laughs> a pretty joyous and fulfilling one. But you know, the other side of that, we want to be, we want to, we know we can access that. 
whenever we need to by putting into practice the things that have been highlighted and emphasized during the classes this week. But the other side of that is don't give too much attention to that barrage of negativity and grossness and, and, uh, and downward pulling vibrations that the world unfortunately is, is barraged with. Mass media, social media, internet, all these other kinds of things. Don't get, in, don't get too involved with that. Use it as necessary, but don't let that be what gives the color and the tenor and the tone to your consciousness. You know, instead, use that live stream, as I've been saying. Use that live stream of Guruji's consciousness, speaking to your intuitively receptive heart and mind. Just repeating and just affirming and just reinforcing, God loves me. Master loves me. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Lord, by your grace and power, I will succeed. Everything will be all right. Our dear Mernalini Mataji told us this story once. It's sort of one of these legendary stories that we learn from our first days in the ashram. And it's so, so meaningful and so useful in terms of what we've been talking about. And she, uh, she was saying how this was in the late 1950s. And uh, Dayamataji, Anandama, uh, some of the others had gone to India uh, to fulfill that long-held promise of spending time there to, to rebuild, literally, literally rebuild from almost nothing the, the work of YSS uh, in Guruji's name. And while they were in India, Mrinalini Ma was left pretty much in charge of the rest of the, of the, rest of the work. And uh, she shared that um, after a while, and she was just a young devotee, I think, let's see, probably just in her 30s even at that point. Um, and it uh, got to be a little overwhelming. And in fact, she, uh, she was very, really doubting her, uh, how, could I, how, how does someone like me have the ability to do what Ma has done? Um, you know, I'm, com I'm really feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling quite depressed about it. And so she said she, she took a, uh, got in the car with a few of the, the other nuns and they drove up to the local mountains just to have a little break, a little respite. And uh, she was walking there in the pine trees and out in, the, in the, those beautiful mountain scenes. And, and inwardly she was just saying, oh, I am so unhappy. I, I don't see any reason to, to continue to, to go on like this. I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm completely... Um, sad and, and depressed and all of these things that I don't even know if she could put words to it, but that's what she was feeling. And then she said this, this little uh, counter voice came back in and said, you should always be happy. Oh, <laughs> and then she said, uh, she kind of answered back and said, um, but I have no reason to be happy. And, and then the voice said, It's a sin against spirit to be unhappy. And then, then she was, um, I guess, uh, somehow needed a little more time to argue back and forth. And, uh, and she said, but there's no, um, I, I, there's no reason for me to be happy. And then the voice came back. And you're, you're recognizing these, right? These are all little lines from the lessons. The, the voice came back and said, if you make up your mind to be happy, nothing can make you unhappy. And if you make up your mind to be unhappy, nothing can make you happy. And then finally she, she realized what was going on and she said she just burst out laughing and said, all right, Guruji, you win. <laughs> uh, live streaming. And that's what we allow him to do by our absorbing of his divine words and his divine consciousness in his teachings. He used to say, those who are in tune with me, with them I do walkie-talkie. <laughs> you remember those walkie-talkies? Do they still have those? Yeah, they're, they're still a thing, not to, cell phones didn't put them in the museums. You know those wireless radios, walkie-talkie? So he says, Gorgie said, those who are in tune, I do walkie-talkie with them. So you keep, uh, 
keep your channel open, will you? <laughs> Anytime, anytime you feel overwhelmed, anytime you feel fear or anger or irritation or the weight of this material world or the fogs of material world gathering thickly around you, use that divine nervous system that God has given us. It's a very sensitive instrument if we use it right. You know, go outside. Go outside in the open sky, hold your hands up, Fingers are like these sensitive antenna. Look into the spiritual eye and just say, Divine Mother, stream your vitality, your life, your power into my cells, into my bones, into my blood, into my nerves, into my muscles, into my heart and brain. And do it slowly and feel it. Feel that streaming of vi divine vitality, of divine strength flowing into each cell. Through the antenna of the upraised fingers. And then into the bones, strengthening them. Then into the flowing bloodstream, charging it with that divine vitality. Then into the nerves, singing that song of divine assurance, of divine strength and courage, and into the heart, into the brain. Master gave those techniques. He said, he said, uh, you know, you can pray to God and the gurus, name them, Jesus, Babaji, Lord Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Sri Yukteswarji, Gurudev Paramahansa Yogananda, Receive my soul's broadcast and send the broadcast of your blessings which flow into me through the antenna of my hands and receptive heart and mind. Live streaming, eh? We're going to give each of you a, a certified live streamer certificate when, at the end of this. Gurji's given us so much. And as I said, every word of it, every thought of it, every flow of divine concern and divine support, just remember, it comes from that unconditional love. It comes from that we can't even begin to fathom how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how ceaselessly he will watch over us, and whisper the divine guidance we need in our receptive conscience, in our receptive hearts and minds. He, he was so understanding. He knew what, uh, what devotees have to go through and what people in general have to go through in this modern materialistic world. You know, how easy it is to, to get misled. How easy it is to, to uh, make a wrong choice, to take a wrong turn. And this is what he said about it. He said, why do people make such mistakes? Why? Why do people make such mistakes? If they asked God for guidance, they would not do so. Learn to steer everything by prayer. Learn to steer everything you do by prayer. If in meditation you dive deep into the stillness, beneath the restless cross currents of egoistic desires, and you ask him sincerely, he will tell you. He'll tell you what is right for you to do. And here's the, here's the promise that means so much. He says, you can't go wrong if you have sincerity. Even if you temporarily err, your wrong will be righted if you continuously ask him to guide you. So continuously ask him to guide you and 
develop the ability, develop the receptivity, that refined um, ability to receive the response. You know, especially remember this, all of us who are on this path of Kriya Yoga, to be able to receive that response, how? That comes through that awakening of intuition. And where does the intuition come from? Guruji tells us, intuition comes by awakening the spine. Intuition comes by awakening the spine. He used to, he used to talk about Kriya Yoga, the, the technique and the science of Kriya Yoga. And he said one way of describing it is, Kriya Yoga, this is finding God on the altar of the spiritualized spine. Finding God on the altar of the spiritualized spine. That's actually the name of one of the upcoming lessons, the supplement lessons that are going out to, to those that are subscribing in the next few weeks. But here's what he said in that. Again, you can't say enough about daily practice of Kriya Yoga. That ties together. It makes possible everything that we've talked about. Not only today in this session, but throughout this week. Guruji says this. He said, intuition automatically develops by the practice of Kriya Yoga. The spinal awakening affected by Kriya changes your consciousness. In ordinary consciousness, you see yourself in terms of externalities. But when I see myself, I don't see the outside. My spine is all. That is where I live. The entire consciousness is in the spine, alive, burning, aflame with the divine wisdom that consumes God-obscuring delusion. That's what I mean when I urge you to find God on the altar of the spine. Well, my beloved ones, What can we say? Jai Guru. Thank you, Guru. Thank you, God, for drawing us, maybe dragging us in some cases, to this Guru and to this path. Don't ever let us go. Hold on to us. Hold on to us. Speak in our hearts. Speak in our minds, speak in our souls, speak in our spine, in the intuitional vibration of assurance and power and divine connectedness. Persevere in your daily practice of meditation, Gurji says, to reach God's shores of endless bliss and freedom. You cannot be held back by any nets of attachment if you have made up your mind to go. What will assure your ultimate arrival? Simply this, personal zeal plus the laws I have taught plus contact with the headquarters. Contact with this Kriya Yoga Refuge, Kriya Yoga Shelter, this worldwide, worldwide wallless temple knit together by so many unbelievably sincere and striving and God-illumined, God-yearning divine souls. That's what we want to keep in touch with. So I invite you, and not only invite, I urge you, revisit the convocation. Come back, watch these videos again and again over the coming year. And you'll, uh, I'm sure, know by now that there's only a thimbleful that probably sank in on the first hearing. 
But even that, even that can, can carry us to salvation. But each time we watch them again, each time we touch that divine power, each time we touch that divine consciousness that's flowing through these teachings, these techniques, this sangam, this wallless temple, this shelter, this refuge, that divine consciousness of the guru, of our Satguru, Paramahansa Yogananda. So let's have a closing prayer, except let's not call it a closing prayer. Let's call it a prayer of continuation of convocation. <laughs> and what I'd like to do is pray the same prayer with which we opened convocation, because that's the theme. That's what I want each of you to have received, what I know thousands and thousands of you have received and what I want all of you to take with you in the days going forward. So close our eyes. Turn the mind within. Lift the gaze to the Christ center, the kutasta, spiritual eye. And we gaze into that space. We're not gazing into darkness. We're gazing into the illumined faces, the living presence to whom we pray. Pray after me, Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswar, our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Guru, kindle a sacred fire in our hearts and our brains and let its wisdom light and purifying flame attract and hold our full devotional attention throughout all the days of our lives. Beloved God, awaken in each one of us the full consciousness of our spirit nature full of joy, full of wisdom and compassion, strength and courage, indomitable will, and above all, fill us with a supreme desire to know ourselves as your immortal children of eternal bliss. Om, 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 peace, 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 Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Amen. May God and our great gurus bless and keep and guide and protect each one of you. Jai Guru.